Until recently, the words modelling and disability didn't seem to go together, but all that's changing. More and more disabled people are getting the chance to strut their stuff on that catwalk, and I'm going to chat with someone who's at the vanguard of this very beautiful group. Disabled model, Kelly Knox. Right, well, thanks for talking to us, Kelly. I've got to ask you, what made you want to be a model? I first saw the um, advertisement for Britain's Missing Top Model on Facebook. Um, I looked at the advert and I thought, yeah, I can do this. Um, I thought I had what it takes to, you know, change people's perceptions on disability. So, um, initially, modelling wasn't, you know, the reason why. And on my original application, I put on there because I wanted to inspire children who were born like me or other children with disabilities or just children who you know, just slightly different from any other child. So that was the reason why I wanted to get into modelling. And it wasn't until I started doing the modelling um, within the show when I thought to myself, I'm actually good at this and I love this and I want to continue to do this. <laughs> so you didn't have any like role models or anyone? It wasn't, you didn't think, well, I'd like to be like them? No, I didn't feel like that at all, no. To be honest, it didn't even come into my mind. I just, just thought, that I had what it takes to, you know, go on this TV show and be a good model and to show them, even if you have a disability, you can still be a great model and rock it. Come on, tell us some of the brands you've worked for. Come on, the campaigns. This is your list. Give us your list. <laughs> um, my, race re my most recent campaign was with Debenhams. Um, there was nine models, um, including me and um, Steffi Reid, who's a Paralympian. It's a really wicked shoot and lots of fun and I just hope other brands will follow suit and start using models with disabilities in their campaigns. Um, I have also worked for PNG Beauty. I was flown to Beijing in China and I walked in their Trends for 2013 fashion show. It was a really amazing experience. I mean the PNG team were they're just such an amazing bunch and their vision was you know all about embracing individuality and your own uniquenesses and you know just saying beauty really is for everyone so I was really glad to be on board or you know something so powerful and knowing I have support from a massive brand or company such as P&G that should say it all really you know other brands other you know other brands should see that and think well we should also be doing the same Disability and modelling don't instantly go together, no. especially in the public's perception. But you have had, you've got a massive CV already, haven't you? I have, yeah. I also um, shot for Marie Claire China when I was in Beijing. Um, I had four outfit changes, so it was spread across about like, a double page in the magazine. Um, I got to wear Carl, Carl Lagerfeld by Chanel. And um, you know, has some really amazing shoes, and it's just really nice being really lovely clothes. I wanted to take them all home. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact that you've done so much you can't remember it all. That's good. I like that. Um, now, of course, I've got to ask the big question: Have you faced any problems regarding your disability from the industry? It's really strange because before um, I entered the world of modelling, I never even gave disability a thought. I know that might sound strange, but. I just didn't consider myself as having a disability, even though blatantly I don't have an arm. I just think, you know, to say the world disabled means you could just say that you're dead, really, because it means you're completely unable to do anything, and everyone, no matter what, has their own ability. So it wasn't until I was in the show and was, you know, submersed into a world of disability and, you know, working as a model, I realised, you know, how many, how many barriers people face with a disability and people's arrogance, ignorance and prejudice. So really, being a model with a disability has opened my eyes to you know, how much prejudice is surrounding disability, especially in the fashion industry. And I just think you know, people just need to be educated. And like you said, people don't necessarily put modeling and disability together. They just think, oh, disability is ugly. And disability is, you know, is a negative word. And I just think for having, you know, people like me and other people out there, like you, Mick, you know, doing your thing, it does help people to be educated and see that disability is actually normal and we exist and we are just human beings like everybody else. So why is it so important for there to be disabled models? Well, I'm going to give you a story. About 
two weeks ago I got a message um, from a girl who's 13 years old in Brazil um, she emailed me through my contact page on my website and she said like she gave me her name her age and said she was born like me and she said um, she wants to be a model and you know seeing my work and seeing my positivity and how that I'm confident you know um, in my career what I do it's given her like the strength within herself and inspired her to want to be a model and she thanked me and you know that kind of thing it really touched my heart and I just thought this is why it needs to happen you know to you know to give young girls like this you know strength and courage and to realize that they're actually okay to be themselves and that you know they don't feel like they have to be perfect to be considered as beautiful or to have a career in whatever they want to do and it's really important that no matter what people should be able to follow their dreams and not feel they have to you know be a copy yeah I do you also think that it has an impact on the wider society? It kind of benefits disabled people, but it also benefits non-disabled people, doesn't it? Yeah, I really think it does. I, I mean, the more people see disability on TV, in fashion magazines, in advertising campaigns, it really is going to normalise disability. As you said before, Nick, dis disabled people are the most invisible section of society. And, you know, that's something I didn't even know until, you know, doing the work I do. Do you get people sort of say really weird things to you blatantly when you go to castings and stuff like that? I've never experienced anything mm -hmm. like that myself, but you know, I'm sure other people have. It's know. funny. Yes. Do you think it's something to do with the way you carry yourself? I really think that. Even before, I remember years ago, some woman I used to work with, she said, I didn't realise you, you know, your arm was missing. And she just said, that's, you know, it's just the way you are, you know, being confident and stuff like that. And I just thought, I don't even realise myself half the time. <laughs> I regularly get people saying, you're not really in that, are you? Yeah. It's like, we're just sitting here for fun, am I? But when I was little, my mum said, when I had, um, like, a fake arm, I was in a pushchair, and I just used to pull it off and throw it, and I did it at the post office, and everyone was like, you know, pointing at my arm. <laughs> so... <laughs> oh, dear. What are you doing at the minute? What are you working on now? At the moment I'm working um, on the second series of I'm Spasticus, we have oh. Channel 4. Yeah, I'm really enjoying that. I've had um, two filming days so far and it's been lots of fun and I'm just, I'm just loving it. It's something I never thought about before mm. but um, you know, I'm, I met the casting director and um, well, the production team and they're just such a lovely bunch and I just thought I love this and I want to do this, you know, even more. It's just about, again, educating the public and able-bodied people about people with disabilities. We can be fit and funny. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, at their expense. At their expense, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're not, no one's laughing at us in those. <laughs> What's next after that? What's the future hold? Um, for me, I just want to just continue, you know, being out there, being a great model, being a role model. Um, I've also, I'm an ambassador for REACH, so on the 11th of May there's the REACH Ball, which I'm going to attend and meet lots of parents and stuff, which would be really good. Um, but I just want to, I want to be like the face of a big brand or a big beauty company. I think it has, for it to be a massive impact, it has to be a, a big brand like P&G. I mean, they have so many brands under their belt, like Max Factor and CoverGirl and Pantene. And what I think they should do is book me to be their, their cover girl. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course, you know, now you're in with Channel 4, what, you know, Hollyoaks, obviously I think yeah. you should be in Hollyoaks. <laughs> so there's a tip, Channel 4 people, Hollyoaks please. You yeah, know, it would be great to do more stuff with Channel 4. Mm. Um, I thought it would be quite, like, you, know, you know, nervous doing TV work, but I'm just, I'm just loving it. So basically watch this space, it's all happening. Yeah, watch this space, you just never know. I'm just really, you know, just enjoying all the experiences and, and opportunities. I'm really thankful for everyone that's, you know, worked for me because it really takes, you know, someone, you know, to take that risk as such and, you know, use someone, you know, with a disability in their campaign or on TV. When you say risk, what do you mean? When I say risk, I, I mean, for instance, um, maybe like a fashion brand or an advertising came, they think, oh, if we use disabled people in this campaign, people aren't going to buy these clothes. Why not? What, do, say, do disabled people walk around naked? Yes, we like clothes. Yes, we like fashion. Yes, we like to look good. 
So maybe that's when I say risks. We think, oh, if, using, if we use a disabled person, people, you know, sales are going to go down, which is, you know, it's rubbish. You, another good point as well, you know, disability has been accepted in sport. TV, you know, it's getting there. Fashion, it's just, you know, so far behind. They need to get with the times. It's 2013. For the evolution, they need to start using disabled models on a regular basis, not just on a gimmicky campaign, you know, just in every campaign they do, you know, use a disabled person. That's what should happen. <laughs> okay, then. thanks ever so much. That's fashion. Thanks, Nick. Cool, nice one. <laughs> hey, cut! So there you go, Kelly Knox, model, possibly actress, maybe a TV presenter, going after me job. Definitely a name to watch out for. Hey, do you reckon I could be a model? No. Too old, mate. <laughs>